Hello and welcome, Aquarista here, back with another video, and today we are revisiting my Plague Doctor build. Now this is a build that I used to run a while back and had a lot of fun with. Now that I have my Pestilence all leveled up and ready to go, it was time to get the video out. So this is my Lifestaff Blunderbuss Healer build. As always, before we fully get into today's video, I do just want to say if this video helps you out, or if you just like it, please drop it a like, it really helps me out a lot. And if you'd like to see more content like this, including more build videos, loot videos, stuff like that, definitely subscribe to the channel and make sure to hit that bell notification if you do want to be notified when those videos do go up. I do also stream throughout the week on Twitch as well as YouTube, so definitely stop by a stream, say hello, lurk, anything like that, we would love to have you. But let's get into today's video. All right, so to get us started, as always, we are going to look at the gear. Now, my gear hasn't really changed much for my healer build. So if you have actually seen uh, my previous videos where I talk about, you know, my specific healer build and all that, uh, you can probably skip this area other than I will talk about pestilence. But we'll just go through the gear really quick for those who have not seen it. Uh, so I do run a lot of health. We do have our four stacks of refreshing and I do have the nimble coat. So I do get two extra stacks of refreshing on top of that. So we're pretty much at a total of six stacks of refreshing overall. Uh, nimble coat, I ended up putting elemental aversion. Uh, it comes with health and then, of course, the double refreshing on it. And then, as you can see, health, refreshing, physical aversion. Uh, we have our fortifying sacred ground on our pants. We don't have a stack of health, but we do have a stack of vigor, which is a really good perk as well. And we ended up pulling these pants for free. So that worked out really well. Uh, currently I am actually not running my, my purity of light. Uh, I would actually be wearing these boots cause I have my divine embrace build on. Uh, so this just gives me refreshing divine embrace. The arcane harnessing obviously isn't doing much for me, but it is a pair of boots that has the perk on it with elemental version. So it works fine. Uh, and then for our pestilence, we do have our pestilence fully leveled up. And then I ended up putting plague splitting grenade. So we have absolute total disease application with it. And then we actually can even apply disease with our secondary, well, our primary, our life staff, uh, even just with our light and heavy attack. So it was pretty sweet that we are able to apply so much disease to big groups. Um, but with this build, it definitely does not always feel like you're doing as much for your team uh, for PVP, but you definitely are. It just does not seem like it uh, until you start diseasing an entire group and you watch that whole group kind of fall apart and not be able to heal up fully through it. For my life staff, still my same life staff. Uh, bless, refreshing move, purifying breeze, still my favorite life staff to run. I don't really change it. And then same with my jewelry. I haven't changed this currently. I do plan on eventually changing my amulet up, my ring I'm happy with, and then my earring I'll probably just level up down the road. So that's what I got for gear. Uh, like I said, it's like all my other healer builds that I've been doing, but I do like to go through it each time. So those who have not seen those videos are able to actually see what gear I'm running. Um, but the main thing is the pestilence. I did give it leveled up. And like I said, plague splitting grenade is absolutely fantastic for this blunderbuss. But next, let's go take a look over at the attributes and then we'll get into the mastery a little bit. Taking a look over at the attributes here, you can see this is my pretty standard layout. I always go with 152 con, the rest into focus, and then I take a 48 con food, which gets me up to the 200 mark, which then gives me that extra 10% physical and elemental armor. Now you could definitely run more or less uh, con if you'd like, but I found that the 200 is like perfect for me for survivability, but also keeping my focus up there. So pretty straightforward though. Um, as you can see, it's not really gonna benefit the blunderbuss at all. It's really all for the life staff. The blunderbuss will not be doing a whole lot of damage. It's all about the debuffs with this build. So again, you're not gonna feel like you're maybe doing as much with your blunderbuss, but in reality, you are doing quite a bit to debuff the enemy. All right, next, let's go take a look over at the weapon mastery. Okay, so we will first go and take a look at the life staff really briefly. Uh, this is my standard Divine Embrace build with my life staff and everything. Uh, so you can definitely take a look here. I'm not going to go in depth, but this is my straightforward. Just if I go Divine Embrace, 
this is kind of how I run it. The only thing that I might change on occasion is I might not always run orb. Sometimes I will run beacon. So definitely uh, you can go between the two. It's it's totally up to you as far as what you feel uh, you need as a healer. But uh, this is what I've been enjoying recently. Next, let's look at the blunderbuss though. So this is the blunderbuss build that I'm running. So again, we need to kind of get it into our mind that we are not doing that much damage. It is nice to have a little extra damage here and there maybe um, just in case, you know, you just need a quick pop a shot off. But let's take a look uh, closer at some of these perks. So obviously we're running net, grenade, and blast shot. I do like to run blast shot all the way up so we do get the haste because the haste you can actually send in a doorway on OPR and give your entire team haste for a bit in there. So it actually is very, very useful when you're on an, uh, on an outpost or pushing into one. Um, but for the passive perks, we're looking at future endeavors. So we actually gain one stamina per pellet hit. That's really, really nice because if we dodge, shoot, even though we're not doing damage, we are actually getting some stamina back with just a normal shot. Down here, we do deep load for this one. So this does do a little extra damage. It's in the last blunderbuss shot. You don't have to run this. Like I said, damage output is not really that important with this build, but I like to do that just because like if I can get a two shot, get some stam back, stuff like that, it does a little bit more damage. Just kind of helps me a little bit maybe in getting someone to back off or to finish someone but in general uh, you definitely don't need to go that route uh, you could go with you know the running gun so you get a little bit of haste but honestly when i'm reloading i'm swapping weapons so i'm not really going to utilize something like that as much same thing on the containment uh, side we go with fortifying aggression so successful hits within three meters grant fortify increasing armor by 10 percent for two seconds it's just an extra fortify extra armor increase so it's really not a bad thing adds to your survivability as a healer especially if you're in your sacred ground uh, you're getting all the benefits from all of that on the chaos tree we have future planning, so using an ability reduces all other ability cooldowns by 4%. So it's really nice because we are dumping abilities with this build. So every time we use an ability, um, we're just shortening the other ones as we go. So really nice cooldown reduction. Bite back, so every pellet is a that is a headshot reduces all cooldowns by 0.5%. Doesn't seem like much, but when you are actually hitting people because you also have this, which is giving you one stamina per pellet, uh, if you aim for the head, then you're getting cooldown reduction on top of also getting your stam back. So um, I like running those two perks together. Uh, you won't always get a headshot, obviously, but if you can, um, either way, you're still getting the stamina back, even if you miss the headshot. So I like, do like to run those two perks together for sure. In the top right here, uh, triggering an ability grants a 3% fortify for 10 seconds, stacks up to five times. So you can actually burn through those abilities like we were saying. You can get, let's say we just do three abilities, that's a 9% fortify, plus if we're within three meters, which typically we are for a blast shot, then we're up to almost 20% fortify just for using our abilities. Uh, so really, really nice uh, way to go about getting a little extra armor, some more survivability. And then on top of that, we have last chance. So with last chance, whenever you take a hit and your health is below 50%, gain fortify, increasing armor by 30%. So you can get a 30% fortify from there. And then let's say we use all three abilities, plus we're within three meters, we're looking at around 50% fortify. So survivability, even if we're in light armor, is pretty awesome. And then if we're running orb of protection, you get another 20% on top of that. So you're sitting at about 70% 70, 70 fortify after dumping all your abilities if you're below 50% on top of that. So it is definitely a way to survive. Um, it can save you when this triggers, when it procs, uh, you'll see it. And then uh, that is kind of your sign to get out of there. And then for our last perk over on the chaos tree here, we do go with double down. So once every 30 seconds, your next ability used will have its cooldown reduced by 50%. So with that cooldown, I've actually gotten my blast shot to go really, really quick because if you use your blast shot and then let's say a net shot, then you end up getting the future planning to reduce that by another 4%. And then if you hit them in the head with your regular shots, then you get even more of a cooldown reduction. So you can actually get blast shot or any of these really to come back really, really quickly because they all have... Well, net shot's a little bit lower of a cooldown, but with splitting grenade and blast shot, we're only at 21 seconds. 
And again, I do have Nimble Coat and all that, so I do have extra stacks of refreshing, but I do highly, highly, highly recommend the Double Down for the ability because it is fantastic with the way we are utilizing Blunderbuss. It's a very, very different way of using Blunderbuss. You are not going to be doing damage. You are all about debuffs. And then with your Life Staff, you're all about removing debuffs or healing or anything like that. If you run Splash of Light, you're removing even more debuffs. So it just kind of depends on how you want to play your Life Staff build. Um, but honestly, with a Blunderbuss, it is a really, really fun way of playing it because you have decent mobility with it between net and blast shot, and people do not expect the healer to blast shot them if they do push them. So I really like it. The double down allows you to get a little extra escape as well if you use net or blast shot first. So um, this build, though, like I said, it's been working fantastic for me. Definitely tweak some things if you need it, but this, is burden. this has been the one that's been working really well so far. Okay, so next we are going to look at a little bit of gameplay of me in some OPRs. Um, just running around with the build. Like I said, it's very fun. I re don't recommend it for PvE so much, but for PvP, it is fantastic. So enjoy some gameplay of my Plague Doctor build.
All right, that is going to do it for today's video. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, this has been a build that I've had a lot of fun with for quite a while. And with the addition of Pestilence, and now that I finally got mine leveled up, it has become even more fun to play with it. Like I said, though, it does not feel like you're maybe doing as much until you start getting into some of the group fights or until you start focusing some of the healers. Because once you start focusing those healers and with the way disease works now, it is fantastic because you're reducing their outgoing healing and their incoming healing. So uh, if you're working with like another DPS or anything like that, try to really focus down and I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. But I've really enjoyed it. It's been a great build for me. Um, I don't play it all the time, but it is very fun uh, on occasion to run in some OPRs or just PvP in general. But that is going to do it for today's video. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thank you.